Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Petra. I'm the Canada coordinator for Croatia. Uh, first of all, thank you all for watching uh, on the water with us and joining us <clears throat> for this online event, uh, this online talk with the director Goran Devic. I hope you enjoy the film. And if you have any questions for the director, feel, feel free to leave them here in the comments and we will forward them to our moderator, Samuel Achberger. Uh, Samuel is joining us uh, from Bratislava, Goran is in Zagreb, and the event is streamed from Prague, so we are continuing in the spirit of Kinedoc with this event. Uh, some of you already know, Kinedoc is an international joint program of seven European countries uh, focused on distribution of European film in alternative screening locations. And if you are new to Kinedoc, make sure to check out what we do at uh, kinedoc.net, and hope hopefully we'll see you um, at some of our future live screenings also. Okay, so I'll give my work to Samuel Agora now. Hello and welcome everyone. I'm really glad to be here today, joined by uh, Goran, um, the director of this of this film. Um, and the film we just watched um, offered a very fascinating exposition of nature uh, in relation to people and to society. Um, it showed certain interconnectedness of nature and its flows with a human uh, and human histories, human culture, uh, human stories, um, which is interesting in, in today's context, especially in context of climate change, where we choose to view ourselves as dominant uh, features in film and in society as it is. And this regard the role of, for example, rivers in the formation of who we are and where we belong. Um, and for me, like I had a long fascination with the different ways uh, we as a society engage with nature and its flows, um, such as the flow of the river. Um, it may be sustenance for some, as we saw in the, in the film, while it poses certain uh, background for recreation or for cultural events for others, um, which makes uh, nature and, and the rivers uh, quite political in itself. And this uh, view, um, offered by this film certainly offers certain political and societal commentary uh, with nature and river at its core. Um, for me, uh, this is very interesting because of the potential of such of this kind of thinking or this way of thinking for the formation of public spaces, which the river has become um, in Sisak and in the, in the context of this film too, uh, which is a topic I explored during my studies at Oxford um, at Nature Society and Environmental Governance course, and I continue to do so as a researcher at the Metropolitan Institute of Bratislava, where I currently work. Um, yeah, today we will be uh, doing this um, discussion in a, in a slightly adjusted format as a dialogue with the director, Goran Djevic, who was himself born in Sisak and is currently um, an assistant professor of the film and TV directing uh, bachelor's and master's programs, correct me if I'm wrong, Goran. Um, and Goran is at the same time an author of several award-winning documentaries. So at this point, I would like to ask Goran um, and give him a word um, with two questions, which first of which is um, to tell us a bit more about himself and, and, and his work and context, and maybe also introduce us um, to his motivations to make this film and what led him to make this film. So, Karan? So, I start to uh, studying uh, film, I think I was 29 or 30, so I was a uh, really late bloomer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I joined the film school because I was a fan of uh, fiction film and during the studying I in love in documentary uh, completely my first documentary that I shot on the academy on the second year was imported crows it was small funny story uh, about uh, birds in my uh, hometown in main park because the, my home citizens killed these birds every year in a different way one year with the rifles, the second year they employed the uh, climbers, you know, and uh, uh, 
they you know broke the eggs and something like that and they spoke about birds with the same hint language uh, as the political propaganda during the war use when uh, Croatians spoke about Serbs and Serbs about Croatians. So I shoot one small uh, exercise for my uh, university uh, as a half joke, you know, and we went on 50 festivals with with that film and uh, won a lot of uh, money awards as a young student. So I love in, in documentary uh, on the first glance. Uh, this is my, I think, 10th or something like that documentary. This is the first time that I uh, so-called properly uh, shot the movie. So I had idea, I, you know, developed the script, I, you know, make some uh, research shooting and we make, a, you know, teaser and apply on the Creation Film Fund. Uh, that was a unique situation for me in my career because uh, all other documentaries, first I shoot without any money with friends and we just uh, don't talk that we already shoot the movie. So I make a perfect strip for the movie, which is already shot. And, you know, we got money after the shooting. So this, this was the first time that I make... Uh, uh, opposite process. So we first collect the money and then start to shooting. And the big problem was that things that I, uh, you know, put on paper during the winter uh, doesn't, did not exist on the, in the reality when we start to shoot the movie. So uh, we was forced, or, or me as a director, I was forced to reinvent the movie during the shooting. So the, the whole film was um, made pretty organically. We went without any idea uh, who is protagonist, uh, what is the story and why we are there with the camera on the, on the spot and just meet interesting people. So one character uh, introduced us with the, with the other and after first uh, summer, you know, we had pretty close all main characters in a movie. Maybe we find one or two in second year of shooting. So we shoot between five or six years and edit two years. So it was a long process. And uh, I think for introduction is it's, it's enough. Or what do you think? Yeah, brilliant. Um, what I really enjoyed about the movie, uh, about the film, was exactly as you're saying, the, the wide spectrum of, of perspectives it, it is offering. Um, could you maybe tell us more about how and maybe why you chose those subjects? How did they connect? Was there any relation to how the movie itself unraveled? Um, yeah. Very simple. And in the same way as you choose interesting people in your private life. You know, if somebody is interesting to you as a person, it's pretty good chance that he will be good character for the audience also. Uh, also, we, we, we are trying to find people who are active, you know not uh, people who uh, went to river for one day or, or occasionally just to swim. Uh, we, we was uh, struggling for characters uh, in, in which we can feel the time in which we live all together. So uh, I didn't know that when I find a guy who swim during the winter, uh, I didn't know that he has a son uh, and this nice relationship with him. And uh, of course, when we shoot the other guy who collect the woods uh, in, the, in the river, you know, we also didn't know that uh, he has a son uh, with the same uh, intention as the, as the other character. So when we, when we find the uh, subplots and little stories uh, that are, you know, uh, connecting or similar, we start to build uh, 
the structure of the film, which was very simple. We start in the in the winter, in which is uh, the these rivers are dangerous. You know, there is a lot of uh, floods in in the region. You know. And uh, we end uh, before the next winter. So it's uh, in, in, in structural way, it's one imaginary year on the river. What is interesting about what you're saying um, also is that this then seems like in a way, it is an ethnography of the, of the specific area, a collection of the stories, like an ethnography of a place um, and, I'm, I'm, I'm very intrigued by that. Also, I am uh, during uh, when, when watching the movie, um, I was wondering, maybe just on, on a little detail. Um, so the person who is collecting the wood, what is their motivation to do so? Is that for them an employment or? Was yeah, that- it's 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 source of money. He is unemployed, you know, and he sell the woods that he collect. Brilliant. Um, and to move to, uh, to, to another point I will need to um, develop during this discussion. Um, so quite a few documentaries um, and films presented by Kinedoc um, course, uh, concern mainly architecture and urban settings, um, which reflect on human experiences, histories and politics in, in a slightly different way. Um, yet here we have a film that uh, also offers a very intimate account of personal histories and, and relationships struggles, but also dreams, hopes, and aspirations. There is even mention like the, this goal of achieving uh, or getting into university in the United States um, by one of the protagonists who is swimming and is by training in the river, um, which creates a really big contrast to, to some other of the characters. Um, but what I, what I, what I really, in, what, I, what I want to, what I'm getting at here, is that all of these things are playing out against the background of urban nature um, as opposed to the pristine, idealized, somehow picturesque nature that we usually see presented in films and in in popular culture and culture as it is. Um, So the nature and the river you are presenting in this movie is somehow uh, a rougher, it's a rough enough version of nature as we might idealize it. Um, and in this way, the nature is impacted by, but also impacts human activities and human life um, in a very tangible uh, way. And what I'm curious about is um, what value uh, do you see in presenting us with this familiar, but often overlooked image of nature as being so interconnected with human activity and, and human human ways of sourcing living, for example, um, yeah. So uh, a nice observation, but uh, when you shoot the movie, you know, uh, you make decisions not based on your intellect or uh, with your analytical or rational part of uh, brain. Uh, I I have. I think during the one week, 10 ideas, what to shoot. And you end with the camera in a film which you, you know, feel with your body. So uh, for me, the river, uh, river is beautiful. And the river is place when I grew up in this city. So uh, my father works in, in, in capital in Zagreb. And I didn't, uh, you know, connect with him during the week because he was, uh, I think, uh, at five in the train for Zagreb and at 6 uh, p.m. he was returning. So my mother uh, forced my father that he invent some kind of hobby that uh, will connect the son and the father. So my father started to, um, to um, catch fish. He, he became fisherman just to you know, connect with me as a kid. So all spaces that you saw in the film was uh, 
basically my uh, playgrounds when I was a kid. So I didn't have on the beginning this big idea, the river as a metaphor of this or that. I just, uh, you know, deeply privately feel that this space is uh, beautiful enough to, to, to make a movie there. But uh, when we start the shooting, we start uh, thinking, me and my cinematographer, uh, about River as, a, as a, another character in the movie. So I think we achieved that uh, River is something that you can touch or uh, hold the sound that we artificially make in post-production was also, you know, directed in, 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 in that, that way. Yeah, you, were, you actually mentioned earlier before we were um, joined in this public discussion that you, that in, in doing the, in the film, in every single scene there is the river in the background directly in the, in the scene, um, which, which is really fascinating. Um, could you maybe develop more on, on a river as a character, maybe how later on when you look back at the movie, um, how you how how do you how do you think about that? Think about what I didn't understand. About, about, the, question, sorry. about, about the river as a as a separate character, as a as a one of the one of the characters present in the, in the in the film itself. Oh, yeah, that... That, that was our intellectual uh, concept that we, you know, translate to the images uh, with two prime, two simple ways. One is that we didn't shot any uh, scene without the the river. Maybe few separate shots in the in the small house that Micho built for tourists. And basically, that's that is that. And the other is when the when we shot the scene with the character uh, on the river, we try to uh, you know make uh, last picture in the in the scene uh, with only rivers. You know, we wait that characters went out from the frame, and I think we use that. Uh, procedure for ending scene so when the guy wash himself you know the last shot is the pure river he you know wash himself and the dirt uh, the real dirt and dirt in uh, in a metaphorical way went you know down and the river is still uh, clean in in the picture on the end of the scene so we we played with that uh, uh, conception, uh, I think, five or six times in the film. I see. Um, what is very interesting also, um, just another thing we talked about earlier, is um, the idea of viewing the river as a public space, an accessible public space, um, which shows, and the film shows the, the great potential of, of rivers to unite the public with its various uses. So the, the movie is in a way, you, you can follow or like watch certain uh, specific areas to which it is um, subjected to. So there is sustenance or sourcing food, for example, uh, which is also connected to recreation, to swimming and training. And there is this aspect of hygiene you just mentioned. Um, uh, or entrepreneurship when it came to uh, building those those um, cottages for, for the public. And then, of course, there is the scene uh, with the remembrance um, uh, event, uh, as well as religious or cultural events. Um, and maybe can you, can you tell us more about um, the significance of this perspective for you personally, of River as a public space? I think uh, the banks of river are maybe one of the last public spaces in our towns. You know, uh, the rich guy and the poor guy are in safe position in the river. They are in short pants and, you know, uh, 
there are no private spaces on the on the banks of the river. So uh, I like this uh, so social environment that we find there. So it's anybody's space. Uh, you can go there, and it's yours tomorrow. You know. I see, and it also, I guess. Um this place, there, there is a political dimension to that as well. Um, is it um, the, the flow of the water or the, the space of the river um, shows us th those uh, differences uh, very clearly. On, on the other hand, like, like on one hand, you have um, these people who are sporting very actively in a proper manner. Um, uh, swimming in a specific style, when on the other hand you have the poorer population, um, but in the in the public space of the river, as you as you mentioned, um, they are all joined in in, in that one public space, which I find really beautiful. It kind of like shows us um, that. Then there was uh, a question from the audience earlier. Um, which I wanted to bring up, but now is like the, the right point for that, um, uh, which was from Tanya Robbins asking, why did um, one of the protagonists destroy the hut? Um, on the, on the bank? It was pure revenge to the formal friend. They built this, this uh, small house together and they, you know, uh, fish, uh, they, they uh, tried to catch the, this big giant catfish from this uh, small house and after their broke relationship, the guy who thought that uh, he invests majority of money for building this small hut, uh, he destroyed it and burned the, the rest. So just that his former friend don't use it anymore in future, so it was you know, metaphorically, uh, you know, act of uh, breaking relationship, friendship. I see. By the more, maybe, maybe even off screen, uh, because you are shooting the movie for for such a prolonged period of time. Um, were there some other ways in which the movie reflected on the evolving relationships or the histories of the people? Animals. Uh, no, no, histories of the people. So if, if there was um, some other uh, scenes or some, some other... Mm -hmm. Other characters that we didn't put in, in final editing. Yeah, I'm, ju I'm just curious like, like about the evolution of characters over the longer period of time. Yeah, we shoot, I think, uh, five or six people more. Uh, one guy is leader of a small uh, worker union in uh, or, uh, in biggest uh, Croatian refinery. And he and his uh, colleagues uh, often on the river, you know, make uh, plans for uh, union ac action. So it was politically good. Uh, he even make, uh, we shot it one big riot, which we shot from the opposite side of river when I think 3000 of workers uh, make a protest, but we didn't edit it on the end. We shoot a few fishermen more, and uh, one girl. Uh, I think we have this girl in uh, in one scene when she invites Rambo to the coast. So the character uh, Rambo came with uh, with the boat. We shot her. Uh, we shot one guy who was a uh, uh, guy who who prevented that somebody on the on the public place uh, uh, like a Baywatch. I don't know what is the English term 
He was a saver, one saver, who was also a champion of bodybuilding. So uh, we shot one uh, bodybuilding event with uh, with uh, competition, and I I think basically that is that. And uh, we shot a lot of fathers and sons and young couples, what we didn't put it in a movie. And uh, we try for five years to shoot the perfect scene in which some young kid will first time uh, swim in his life. So we, sh- we actually succeed, but uh, it was better scene than uh, all other things that we put in a movie. So it was some, this beautiful scene make uh, in balance in the film. So it was, we, we wait for some other film to, to edit this beautiful thing. Oh, this relates to our next question from the audience. If you are currently working on any new films or plan to do so. We just finished the, I think, final cut of my new documentary in which we shoot, uh, we ported one, uh, little society in one building. So we, uh, we find the biggest uh, buildings for workers that was uh, during the socialist period in Sisak built for, for workers of iron work industry. And we shoot two years, uh, whole apartments, whole citizens in one big, big, uh, big building. And after three days, first three days of shooting, we, uh, you know, uh, we was uh, amazed that we find the guy who, we, who is leading character in On the Water, the guy who was in jail, Robert. Mm-hmm. When I start to shoot uh, On the Water, in local newspaper was small, uh, small, reportage about my film in which they said the director Goran Devich shoot a movie about homeless guy who, who live in abandoned uh, building on the bank of the river. So uh, social democrats in uh, social democrats in my hometown said it's, it's we are leftists. There are no homeless people in our town, and they give the small apartment to to a guy who is homeless in our film. So we shoot the other film with the same character. Mm-hmm. So the Robert is in on the water, on also in the in the next movie that that I just. Uh, I think uh, I'm finished last last week. Sure. And do you, do you feel like there is any relation between the way you you present these stories uh, compared to uh, on the water film? To it's this basically, this is the same movie, but uh, I I pick some uh, small world, and you know. Uh, I stole the good characters from this small world and make some structure. Basically, it's the same. One building or through two or three rivers, it's, it's almost the same. Uh, but of course, uh, it's much more easier to shoot people in apartments than in, in small boats. So, you know. Yeah, and what is what is your intention when when you say you focus on small worlds? Is there some added meaning of that to you, or what is what is behind that? You can shoot a film about whole world, but you can find your own, your own small worlds in which uh, things are the same. You know, small picture and big picture are pretty the same. So uh, I, I pick worlds that I. No, I pick my world, you know, it's my hometown. I know, you know, people who live there and um, I know the smells and sounds and uh, you are on, on your playground when you, when you shoot movie in your hometown. So uh, you can shoot the same movie, you know, in Paris or in Prague 
but uh, you know for me i i will spend five years just to connect with that space before the first day of shooting so my start position is better in my own society if that is a question yeah, yeah i see um well i might um ask my, my last question i have prepared for you which is slightly provocative um but if you could give one theme more space in the in the film on the water um, and maybe change it a little which one would it be if there is any of course hmm. i don't know good good very good question maybe i will you know um, on the end uh, last Rambo's sentence about war crimes uh, put before the baptism. Maybe, I'm not sure that our last decision uh, on ending of the film are completely right. So, but uh, if we, you know, uh, make this decision, the uh, beautiful friendship of Mitch and Mario will end uh, before last uh, third of the film. So, you know, you, on the other hand, you have, uh, you know, good things on some decision, and on the other hand, you lose something. So maybe that, maybe that. Mm -hmm. And and I think I regret that I didn't shoot the opening scene of the film that I... Uh, was trying to, to shoot with, uh, it was a uh, winter scene in which uh, the whole river is in ice. In all seven years of shooting, uh, was, uh, you know, no hard winters with possibility to shoot something like that. In my whole life, I experienced the, this kind of situation on the river Coop, I think five or six times five or six winters were strong enough to make ice, uh, you know. So it was my imaginary first scene of the movie that I didn't show. <laughs> That's a comment. Because, because the guys came with the dynamite and, you know, they bro break the ice with the, with the explosion. So it's, it's good for the beginning of the movie. <laughs> We're perfect, yeah. Um, well, that was, that was my last question. We are actually nearing the end of, of our time. Um, so I want to thank you very much for uh, joining us today, Goran. Um, this has been really fun for me and I really enjoyed the movie, um, as I'm sure did everyone. Um, and yeah, that's, that's everything for me. I thank everyone for, for joining us today. Um, if Goran were to say some last word, farewell words. Just say thank you for inviting me and sorry for my uh, broken English. Oh, it's very good. <laughs> thank you very much then. And I'm sure we will, um, with Kinedoc, see you soon.